Okay, hello everybody, I'm Conquer. Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome to a, uh, for me, late night stream and uh, of uh, the West Russian Revolutionary Front. This is going to be live stream number two. Uh, I was up at a right this time, and I've got some energy, and I just thought, you know what? Let's do a live stream. Uh, usually if I'm kind of up this late, and I've got some energy, and if I'm deciding to work on recording something or whatever, um, I... I like just work on pre-recorded stuff, but I thought, you know what? I do try to do things in different time slots every once in a while because I know that I got fans that, you know, across the globe, which is really it's, it's still amazing to me. And I know different people, even you know, maybe if you live here in the United States, you have different, uh, you know, work schedules and things like that. So I thought we'd do a, another stream of uh, the Moe Reich, or excuse me, the Moe Order, excuse me, uh, here in uh, Hearts of Iron Four, and um, yeah. Have, just have a little fun. We're going to probably keep it a little chill. I don't want to wake up my neighbors. I don't like to be that guy. Um, I'm the guy who gets annoyed at that guy. Uh, but anyway, I don't know how many of you, how many people are going to show up <laughs> at this hour. Uh, oh yeah, I suppose it's a Friday night and it's a religious day. Um, anyway, I'm just babbling now. Let's get, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, hello to everybody who's catching up with this later and listening to me in 1.5 speed or something. I uh, hope you all are doing well. Um, so, were we going to do industrial investments or hold on to the political power? I think we're going to hold on to that because we're just about done here. Uh, yeah, Arcane School is going to be calling. I think it's pretty much done. I mean, it looks like we still have a slight struggle, perhaps, with, uh, Zukov. He's about to make some sort of moves. What is this? The Red Star United Army declared war on Oberkommando Brauschstadt. Stadt? I don't even know where those people are. Is it something over here? Oh yeah, it's just chaos out here in the uh, in this area. Got Nazis fighting Nazis fighting Nazis fighting locals. Some sort of nonsense going on out there. It doesn't involve me though. So whatever. Just never mind, never mind. Ooh, military parade is good though. Military parade's just awesome because, uh, yeah, it'll help with our army professionalism rate, which uh, we're already rapidly getting into overdrive here, so let's keep kicking that into overdrive some more. So we're at five points now. Wait for this to go away. We're getting five points a month. Can we get, is this going to get us up to six? I kind of hope so. Uh-oh. What's going on? Are we freezing up? Did I break the game? Oh, no. Okay, I don't know. Let's see. Bogi Smerti has declared war on Moscow. Yeah, we, we've just got anarchic uh, Moscow happening over here. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a madhouse out here. Stalingrad has become Paulusburg under Helmut von Panwitz. National socialism, of course. I think, yeah, the Antichrist is here, everybody. Bogi Smerti. Uh, you know what? Let me get a snip of that. I'm gonna do something with it later. Okay. So, yeah, the Moscow Anarchy is in full force. Africa Shield is also intervening in South Africa. They're asking where the fuck are the Yankees? Yeah, the shit's hitting the fan all around the world. That's uh, that's the fall of uh, '63 for you in this game. Uh, okay, so we should now be getting yes, we're getting six a month. So we've got 570. Oh, no, excuse me, 570. We've got 57 points in there right now. Um. So it's every month. Uh, let's see what happens at the end of the month. So in theory, this is going to take us then to 63 out of 240, right? Give it a day. There's another war happening or something. It's going to break up more. What's going on? Who is this tiny little country? So we've got the Red Star United Army here. They've got, like, Lenin coming out of the star. Look at that. And then this is the Oberkommando Brauchestad under Eric von de Bach. Um, Russia's in more pieces than usual. Oh, yeah. 
We've got one, two, like like from from if we go from the Caspian Sea to the Baltic Sea, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It, it's just now it's it's madness, absolute madness. And you know, of course, the the uh, the Antichrist is here. Good to see you, Tenbray. Uh, anyway, I was going to right. We're going into December now. So. This is going to cross over. This should go to 63 points, right? Yeah, 63 out of 240. So let's see. If you take 240 and you minus 63, that's going to put you at 177. So if we then divide that by 6, it's going to take us 29. Let's round it up to 30 months. So 30 months-ish, we'll be able to increase our army professionalism. So a little bit under three years. So before before we get to 1967, we'll have improved our army professionalism, which is very good. Um, again, do I want to invest in that infrastructure or... Oh, securing control is always good. Yeah, look at our stability. We're spiking it. Or no, that's war support. Excuse me. No. <laughs> you know, stability is actually real bad right now. Yeah, too many bad things. Too many negatives. There's no voting. The poverty rate. Oh, the poverty rate is just the worst. It, it gives such bad penalties to your country. What the heck? Novo Sibirsky won the war. Dmitri's dead. No, Shostakovich. Well, now we have to go east to avenge him. Our dear friend Dmitri. <laughs> Breaks my heart. Um, reopen the mines. Yeah, because we need. Actually, we kind of have enough steel and boom. What's this? Archangel School's new direction. Germany was spiraling closer and closer to civil unrest. Amount of resources allocated was dwindling. The anarchy might soon end. Uh, okay. So Zukov is basically uh, in, in an advantage right now. So Zukov over here just got an extra military factory. Good for Nona, huh? Hmm. Operation Snow Maiden. Nah, nothing good will come of that. Uh, how about Warlord Raids? I don't, I don't think there's really anybody else that we could raid, though. We've also done a successful raid too recently. Let's see. Countries racked with civil war are hardly the bastions of the middle class. I know, but I'm just saying the, the poverty rate thing, it just sucks. It's so many negative effects. Yeah, it hurts our recruitable population, our factory output, construction speed, research speed, stability, wars, but just so many negative effects that stack on one another. Hey, wait a second. This Akatobi kind of looks like uh, Batov does. I wonder if maybe they're from the same anime or something. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Now, we're, we are... I want to do the industrial investments or not uh, how are we doing in terms of the tanks it's gonna still take 440 days why okay what are we short on well it doesn't matter because we can't trade for it anyway or can we okay a little bit yeah you know what we actually could do a little here let's trade for that let's trade for no we can't trade for the rubber unfortunately but now I think we were only missing the tungsten. Yeah, we were only missing the tungsten, so now we should actually be able to build some freaking tanks. So we, it was going to take us like 400 something days. Now it's only going to take us 363 days. Well, still pretty bad. Still real bad. But uh, we'll slowly start to get more stuff. The monthly population goes up, poor people have more kids and all that. Yeah, yeah. I remember learning that, like, freshman in high school, like, population pyramids and how they evolve over time, generally speaking. Uh, which I thought was interesting. That was one of the few things I remember that was good from that particular class, though, because, you know, every, every state in the, in the country, and honestly every city and every school and every city in the United States, they have different education programs, but at least where I went to high school... Uh, freshman year of high school, you didn't take a history class. You took something called um, geography. But the geography wasn't just geography class. Like, I remember we studied world religions in the geography class, which is weird when you think about it. Um, 
but also I don't think I had a particularly good teacher. Yeah, you know, I just, I definitely didn't. But uh, I do remember she explained the population pyramids well. Um, so there was that at least. Uh, okay, I need to change who's in charge here. Clara. Okay. Let's get position here. Okay. Great. Great, great. Oh, Comey went red. Zendanoff. They're going to space. The one place uncorrupted by capitalism, if I may repeat the joke everybody's made a million times. The government has prevailed in the English Civil War. Himmler got screwed. A light cannot go out, only dim. Let's see, there's a channel that focuses on countries' population pyramids and how it will affect the future of trends. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of a modern example of a country that is, uh, transitioning. Yeah, like, like, Nigeria, I think, has been going through a transition period. Nice, uh, nice gator neck there. It's a white one, though. It's gonna get dirty in the desert. Um, yeah, I want to say it was Nigeria that, because Nigeria is starting to industrialize more and has a growing middle class. So... Basically, the way that uh, population pyramids work is when you are a... It, the way it typically works when you're a poor country is it actually looks like a pyramid. It's very wide at the bottom with the young people, and then it narrows very quickly toward the top. But Nigeria is, is, um, is uh, you know, becoming more industrialized every year. Um, and so what's happening is now people towards the top, like life expectancies are going up, and so now the entire pyramid is getting wide. And then what happens in the third stage is that eventually things settle down and so people stop having so many kids and so then the bottom of the pyramid uh, starts to narrow. And so then you have like a bulge until it eventually stabilizes in like, I guess, sort of a rectangle. Uh, which is of course, you know, th these are oversimplifications, but like just general trend, that's how things go. Obviously, there's many, many factors that could affect these sorts of things. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. Let's do this vacuum tube computing. Uh, yeah, it's always more complicated. I remember I once had this professor. Um, it was a Roman history class, actually. Um, a specific part of Roman history. It was like, covering from the Hellenic period to before the rise of the Caesars, uh, and, hold on, hold on, let me think here. Mm, the guns we can get any time, let's resume some military exercises, and then it says we're gonna get the new directive again, I guess? Uh, anyway, though, um, I remember he, I don't, I don't know how it came up, but he started talking about his personal politics, uh, let's see, the Nigeria is boringly stable, no, excuse me, the United States is boringly stable, Nigeria's gonna explode, I doubt it can keep itself stable with all those people crammed in such a small space with its resources. Well, yeah, that's what, that's what happens with the pyramid, eventually it stabilizes, cause, like, it's, it, but you have, like, this bulge period that happens. Um, but, you know, Malthus always wins in the end, right? Uh, with his Malthusian theories. Uh, do I want to meet with the veterans just to kind of keep a tiny lead on Zukov? No, it's going to take like a couple weeks. No, nah, like two months we'll be done here. I think we can wait. Yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, boy, Zukov still made it a race though. Anyway, uh, what was I talking about? We were on Nigeria and population pyramids and... Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little more tired than I thought. I've not been sleeping well the last couple days, but I feel like I've got some energy now, but... But you know what? It is wearing on me because I was I was watching a movie earlier today. Uh, it was No Country for Old Men, and I couldn't remember who directed it. Even though the Coen Brothers are some of my favorite directors, and like I, you know, that's a that's a terrific, terrific, terrific movie. Um, and I couldn't remember who did it. Wow, love that shade of green. That works. She's working that girl. I think it just it, you know brings out her eyes. Um, Fuck, what was I? I really don't remember where I was getting shit. Sorry, everybody. Uh, yeah, No Country for Old Men, though. Great movie. Great movie. Um, 
Actually, when I was watching it, uh, something I was noticing is, uh, oh, let's scavenge for loot, yes, uh, was that there is a lot of landscape paintings in the buildings, like in every interior area in that movie. And landscape, landscape uh, paintings are extremely common in the United States, particularly, though, in the Southwest. You'll see it everywhere. I've got landscape paintings. Um, my friends, you know, even young ones, even young ones that live on their own, they have landscape paintings in their in their homes. New directive. Uh, yeah, so this is the same thing except for Tukhachevsky. Um, how their social programs uh, handle the strain. Yeah, yeah, Japan is a classic example of, I think it was called third stage. And you know, I learned this stuff years ago. I don't know if the terms have been updated, if things are more refined now, but at the time we used to call it third stage population pyramids. Japan is a classic example of that where it has this huge elderly population and so it's causing a strain on the younger generations and so it's got to balance itself out. But until it balances itself out, uh, things are gonna be, there's gonna be a really kind of painful period. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I was watching Old Country for No Country for Old Men, and and uh, I was like, there's a lot of there's a lot of landscape portraits in these, even in even in like fancy apartment, or, like fancy buildings. A couple of ones that you see here and there. There goes the Red Star United Army. They should have asked us for help or something, dumbasses. Uh, and I was wondering if there was like a meta. It was a metaphor. Or maybe it was just trying to create a sense of place, not just because the landscape paintings were common, and especially you know back then, you know, with because because that takes place in 1980, Texas, uh, that movie. But it's kind of it, you know, it has a western feel of a movie, but a lot of it takes place in towns and cities while the main character is on the run. Uh, so I'm wondering if like you know we're gonna have landscapes in the background to kind of keep that western feel. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just a classic case of you know projecting things that that aren't there. Because I was I was telling some I was telling a friend, like, you know, this is a Hollywood set that they're filming on. You think things don't just show up on set by accident? And then so we said, well, maybe they're just filming in an office building they got to use. It's like so it was already decorated. And they just went in there and filmed it. I'm like, well, I don't know. Could go either way. Man, Eastern Europe is a fucking mess right now. All right, Novosibirsky is doing its thing, going after Andreev here. And the People's Revolutionary Council seems to be losing against the Black Army, but I think everybody's going down. Hello there, Smiling Altar. Ark Engskal is calling. Grave news has made itself known. The Grand Marshal is now dead. The front now braces itself for another radical shift, changes in leadership as its figurehead for the last decade fades away. Whoever the front chooses to be its leader, it must make haste, for the world is changing and opportunity does not wait. Oh, this is going to give us something, too? We'll get 50 political power. Very nice. Okay. Well, Clara, I think uh, we're going to have to move you on the border to prepare to deal with Zukov. Yeah. I think we might have just drained all the resources out of the others. <laughs> That's why, out of Vorkuta and Onega. I'm pretty sure towards the end there, Onega only had loot because they stole some from uh, from Pletsetsky down here. Organization and defense is up. For Tukhachevsky's fiefdom. Let's see, Tenbrae says... I think it takes about two to three generations of a population booms before country industrializes and the population starts producing less babies. Western Europe, for example, had their baby boom decades before World War One. Yeah. Ah, uh, nothing like that period before World War One, which nowadays we try to pretend was uh, was an awesome, beautiful period. Uh, that there, what there's a there's a Barbara Tuchman book. She's a very well respected. Um, Historian. She's most famous. I'd say she's most famous for her book, *The Guns of August*. Um, but uh, I would I, I recommend her book, uh, *A Distant Mirror*. It's a very interesting picture of uh, 14th century medieval Europe. Uh, 
anyway, uh, it, but she has this other book called The Proud Tower, which is basically a history of, well, I wouldn't say it's a history, but, well, you know, because his, history is such a broad term and you have many subsets of history, uh, but like, so, so Proud Tower is kind of, is kind of like a book evaluating European society in the, in essentially the Edwardian age, like before World War One kicks off. And one of the main arguments that she makes is that, like, you know, nobody living in those times thought they were in some beautiful, uh, you know, period of prosperity and, and then, like, World War One destroyed it all. You know, it's all perspective. Sure, later, after World War One happens, and everybody's like, man, I, love, I miss the good old days. You know, the 1890s, pretty awesome when millions of us weren't dying. Uh, anyway, should, let's go ahead and initiate this raid. get a bit more loot and then I think we're gonna invest it in what do we want to do research facilities maybe yeah we keep stacking on the societal development they refuse tribute what is it Caesar just always meowing because I'm streaming oh sh shit uh, okay there we go oh whoa yeah I didn't like those yellows and reds there for a second that was no good. Iberia has gained control of Algeria. Hmm. The death of Voroshilov. Today, Grand Marshal Klement Yefremovich Voroshilov, the leader of the West Russian Revolutionary Front and former People's Commissar for Defense under Bukharin, has passed away due to old age. Uh, for the past few decades, he had continued the desperate conflict against the Third Reich. In the last years of his life, Voroshilov has worked desperately in spite of the German terror bombings to turn the West Russian Revolutionary Front into an actual state which represents the Russian people, trying to balance the wills of Georgi Zhukov and Mikhail Tukhachevsky and keep them cooperating. The favored successor seemed to be either Marshal Georgi Zhukov or his main rival, Marshal Mikhail Tukhachevsky as they are certainly the most popular generals among the remnants of the Red Army that remain loyal to Voroshilov. These two generals have amassed many followers of their own and until now, and have until now only really worked with each other because of Voroshilov. Both have been working behind the scenes, attempting to gain influence with the Front's Stavka, attempting to persuade it to march forward in their point of view. Many believe the Stavka has, have already selected a preferred candidate already and are preparing to declare him the next leader of the Front. Their view being proved right when the heir to Voroshilov was declared to be Grand Marshal Marshal Tukhachevsky. So I think we're going to now formally absorb uh, Poletsk. Maybe. Yes. Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky, a.k.a. the Drifting Snow Katyusha. Uh, the Red Napoleon, prowess and skill, undying faith in the eventual triumph of socialism unrecognized for his talents, atrophying away in Poletsky, still biding time and waiting their turn to strike. Okay. He, Katusha will announce to Russia and the rest of the world that nothing shall hold back the waves of the revolution until the red flag flies in the skies forever and ever. And so in 21 days, we'll become the new leader. Okay. Let's see. You remember talking to somebody from England who supported... Brexit, he harkened back to the days of Thatcher, despite the fact he was barely older than me. So what, like, you think he wasn't old enough to really remember Thatcher? Let's see, I'm in my late 20s, I don't remember the Clinton years at all. I think the first political event that I remember, I remember that people were, was like, there was a lot of, um, tension and such over the, uh, over, over the, the, the 2000 election, but not specifics, you know. Uh, I just remember I was just a kid, but like people arguing about it, or like there was always it was always on the news. There was this a lot of tension. Um, but specifically, the first thing that I can remember seeing on like television that was a political event was the inauguration. Um, all right, so we have Dmitry Ustinov, our friend here. Uh, yeah, we got armor officer, brilliant strategist. We got some good freaking generals right here. Mountaineer, skill staffer. Good stuff. But of course, you know, we have to go with Mikhail Tukhachevsky as our, uh, 
as our choice of leader. Hmm, probably the AI already filled this up, but that's fine. Aggressive assault, Jim. He wanted the country to go back the way he was when he was a kid. Well, you know, I don't like to talk about my personal political feelings, but uh, I, I, I have noticed the trend, and it's on both sides, many sides, uh, that it's... When you get right down to it, at least in America right now, it seems a lot of it is people crying and going, This isn't the America that I know. So, you know, the that, could, that means different pe things to different people. Uh, what do we want to do? The research facilities. Research facilities. What happens if we get better research facilities? We're going to lose political power gain. We have 5% research. That's fine and all, but... Okay, industrial expertise. I'm trying to just see what is is best for us to, you know, improve. Oh, this is awful. Just awful. This industrial base stuff here. Yeah, let's try to get rid of that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's train some new workers. How many, uh, oh shoot, what? Transmission from the Ukta military district. They have declared war on us. As in Onega? No, who? Oh, no, no. Ukta is over here. Wait, yeah. I'm stupid. So, ah, Nona. Sorry that it had to come to this. But Clara and I shall defeat you. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure anybody, everybody remembers their childhood as being great. You know, like, oh, yeah, I didn't have to pay the electricity every month. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean, Tenbrae. Like, freaking, There was a point when I was a kid, and I don't think I really understood it until I was older, but, like, between my two parents, they were working five jobs at one point. Um... But, and I guess maybe that's a good thing, that, like, you know, if you're struggling, but you, you don't really let your kids in on it. Like, it's not like I thought we were rich. Definitely not, but it's like... I guess I didn't realize how up against the wall it was at times. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things you can't really appreciate when, until you're older. When the towers fell, yeah, of course I remember 9-11. Definitely remember that when I was a kid. Remember that morning. I remember my mom on the phone with her sister. Yeah. Now you got kids graduated high school born after 9-11. You got kids who born after 9-11 or, you know, in Afghanistan. There was an un onion article made many years ago, and it's and some say that the onion has become prophetic, but uh, it was something like uh, you know, uh, Amer American Marine very proud to um, to be taking over his father's old patrol in uh, in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Khanate of Koshetau declares war on the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic. I tell you, I really like this shade of blue. Like, I can even hear the shoom right across that red. That works. Maybe it's because blue is my favorite color. You know, that's where communism failed. They, they embraced red instead of blue. Look at this beautiful shade of blue. If everybody had done this, it would have been great. Oh, this is a despotic regime. Never mind. <laughs> yep, but it all worked out. The clock man is no more. Oh, no, yeah, they went with Zandoff. We're getting Spaceman over here in Comey. <laughs> Excuse me. Pierre Poujad, elected as president of France, which sure, sure dresses like a French woman. <laughs> um. Yeah, what a mess. What a mess out here. Just, just everything east. Oh no, Germany. Yeah, no, all of Europe is crap right now, except for Europe, except for the Iberian Union. You know, with the which has the council in charge now, I guess. But look at this. The the Italian Empire kind of has things together, but they don't even like. You know, they kind of need Ragusa here to be meshed. But it's just, just a. This is hell. <laughs> Map of Europe ain't gonna be worth much for a while. Yeah, every American millennial lost their collective innocence that day. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I guess you could say that was my political awakening, not in terms of like literally like, oh, I knew who my senators were as a child, but it was like, you know, really woke me up to the broader world. Um, was uh, was nine eleven? Like you know, my dad was in lit was was in the military at the time. You know, we thought like, is he gonna go to Afghanistan? Is he gonna go to Iraq? Um, he ended up retiring uh, before his um, before his his unit um, rotated over to Iraq because everybody was in those days. But like, it would have been pretty freaking crazy because he served in the Gulf War, so. Like, and it's not a, the thing is, it wasn't an uncommon story, but like, can you just, just imagine, you know, if you had served in the first Gulf War and then 22 years later, you're a, no, I did the math wrong because I'm an idiot. 10 years later, you're back, you know, and, and that happened to a lot of people. Because, you know, when you, military service, if you go the full, the whole way, and my father did his 20 years and more. Uh, that, you know, it wasn't uncommon that there were people in that. Fuck. You go to any military cemetery, you're gonna see gravestones where people fought in World War II, and then they fought in Korea, and then there's some who fought in Vietnam. It, you know. And, like, Korea, it was, like, I guess the World War II Korea thing wasn't unusual. I think I once saw the stat that, like, yeah, basically Korean War vets were on average notably older than World War II ones. Um... Because a lot of them were guys who got, you know, they, they served in World War II, and then they went back. They got back in. Um, not everybody, but that was common. Uh, but then, like, you know, if you're in Vietnam, so let's say even if you went there in in 65, right, when, when things are ratcheting up. So that was 20 years difference from 45 to 65. You served, you could serve in World War II, Korea, and then in Vietnam, and it, it wasn't uncommon. Uh, let's see. So who are the ladies in Germany? You're right, right. Let's get back to the video game, shall we? Instead of my late night reflecting. Um, uh, let's see here. The rest lost it when the mortgage crisis happened in 08. Oh, yeah, yeah. That affected a lot of people, um, obviously. So we get, here's Heydrich from Heydrich's Germany. Up here we have Albert Speer of hoodie fame. Uh, here's Martin Borman, and what is this? Oh, there's some ultra-nationalism sprinkled in there. How about that? Uh, and then, of course, Ermin Göring, who didn't even use red in his flag, except for, like, some little tiny trim of it there. And then, uh, then Hans Spiedl, of course, who's just like, is he just the ref, you know, for the war? Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. So there goes Krasnoyarsky. Yeah, no, Novosibirsky is doing pretty big, but on the other hand, I've seen them, I've seen them fall to the anarchists many times before. We'll see what happens. But they defeated our friend Shostakovich. Who cares if Shostakovich was a social democrat and we're, you know, hardline authoritarian socialists? He was my friend. It's unacceptable what happened. Okay, present arms. Time to get more infantry equipment, and we've got stability. There we go. Mikhail Dukachevsky in charge. An eccentric, talented member of the Soviet High Command. If the Soviet Union is bound to return under Tukhachevsky, it will return as an armed camp, eternally vigilant against its numerous enemies, with every cog inside its state machine rotating towards the final victory. Uh, so we're starting to get, I think, a little bit of excess equipment, are we? No, we got motorized. Yeah, yeah, I think we can actually start to make some more divisions now, which is, of course, very nice. Yeah! Uh, let's just go with these anti-fascist brigades for right now. See how many can we make. Yeah, I just want to start filling in these front lines here. Um, you know, with Comey or whoever else it is we may end up uh, dealing with. Raiding and loot. We're training new warriors. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start ignoring the warlord development stuff. Some of it's good it, for sure, but. Um, I think I want to save the political power so we can do with some massive coring later on. Uh, 
Are Zoomers getting more apathetic to the future? Well, I can't speak for Zoomers, but like in my generation, I've, I've seen I've seen the studies since the like you know because the mortgage crisis of 08 came up. Um, there was a noticeable spike, and, and it's really the the ripple effects were going on for like a decade. Uh, an increase in um, in like alcoholism related deaths. Uh, you know, people talk about the opioid c crisis. I think definitely the way that it's uh, it's spiked, um, it, you definitely could trace its roots to uh, 2008. Um, and you see, these kinds of things are really interesting. This is what I like to talk about um, because, like these these are things that are not really political. Like nobody denies something that, like you know, there's an opioid crisis. There's just you'll have arguments on like how to deal with it. Um, so like this is the kind of more modern politics that I can sort of talk because it's just Finland's looking thick. Oh yeah, that is that is thick. It's very thick. We're gonna have, don't worry. We're gonna trim it down until we are the thick ones. Uh, but uh, fuck, what was I saying? Uh, the 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 the. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of seeing societal trends like that. Um, Let's per, uh, and, and you know, like you, you know, the, 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 the mortgage crisis happens and all the ripple effects of that, people losing their jobs, people losing their savings, losing their homes, and then, you know, their children, even if it's only on a subconscious level, their children lose hope, they turn to vice, be it drugs or alcohol, and, uh, and then it ends up killing them, you know? You get cirrhosis, so like cirrhosis of the liver deaths. Those kinds of things are very interesting to see. It's just like how in in what could be considered prosperous uh, nations, you do have like increases in birth rates and things like that. And it's 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 a tale as old as time. Um, you know, you I should read sometime the the Will Durant's um, kind of this essay he wrote at the end of his third story of civilization book, where he talks about the. Uh, the the fall of rome and what caused it and, and it's and it's an essay and like you could write obviously there's been entire books the famous decline and fall of the roman empire that discusses okay what caused the fall of the roman empire but i think that the end of uh third story of civilization book by will durant which is called caesar and christ um it just very succinctly explains it and they talk about things and then like i remember i was once because I have friends who tolerate me doing this, I was once reading that passage to a friend of mine, and he was saying, like, whoa, some of those things are here today. And it was like, yeah, there's some people who see America as Rome, and some people think it's falling. And I'm not going to give my opinion if I think America's falling or not. But, to, oh, we're going to continue to rapidly improve. Damn, our professionalism is going to keep getting better and better. So we're here at six a month, so I wonder what's going to happen after I do this March thing. Um, uh, hey, Pen Kitten, how you doing? By the way, Pen Kitten, way to just shut me the fuck up. I don't know. I, I know that you were planning that for weeks. Uh, you must have been, but uh, I don't know if you caught me in one of my live streams talking about how like the Rick Roll was played out and not funny anymore and it's not creative. And then you went and did your little community post thing, and you just went conquering history games can like. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and drag my nuts across his face. <laughs> it, it, it was amazing, and I loved it. Uh, okay. Let's prepare for a raid against uh, Yugra. Which is over here. Come on. Come, Clara. Let's see here. But, you know, it's always, there's also perceptions, too, because you'll have, like, a lot of people who are going, like, man, there must have been so much drugs in the 80s, and it's, like, and it's so much worse now, you know, but there's, like, the, the, the idea of, you know, the, I guess the Wall Street dude doing cocaine in between, you know, day trading or whatever. Um, let's see here. Um... Okay, so we're going to get some more loot after this, and I think we're going to go, I don't know, how bad is the agriculture stuff? We've got base mechanization. I just don't think we really need to go, like, the, the factory output's cool, but, you know, 
Anyway, we should talk about some other things. Wow, I've got a fair amount of viewers right now. <laughs> As well, good. That's cool. I'm glad people from it's probably people from other, you know, time zones, uh, coming in. Um. So, can we go ahead and initiate the raid? Yes. Here we go. Keep getting that loot, baby. Do we not initiate the raid? What's going on here? Oh, midnight. Uh, no, it's not. What's going on with the raid? Oh, they just pussed out. I'm sorry. That's I shouldn't say that they pussed out. Because pussies are much tougher than Yugra. Pussies can, you know, give birth to babies. They do strong, important things. And Yugra... Yugra does nothing that is strong. I swear I'm sober. I'm just late night rambling, I guess. Um, hmm. What do we got here? Um... Alright. Um... What I think our next play here is... Wait, secure control. What does that mean? Where's that at? Oh, that's the stability thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we've finally been digging ourselves out of this hole in terms of stability. We're up to 29% and rising. But besides that, we're just going to keep saving up that political power because I want to just core, 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 core very quickly once we get the chance. We, we'll need as many people as possible for the new Red Army. Ultimatum. We've received an ultimatum from Onega. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, you friggin... I don't know, puppets of the Finns? I'm trying to think of a slur for a Finnish person to insult them, but I don't know any, I think. Ah, the wars have begun. Samara is going after Tartarstan. They went to Vaslov. I know it's the glasses, partly, but she does just look so tired. Being a despot's hard, I guess. Uh, okay, Volgda, St. George. Do we want to go after St. George first? It would be an easy war, I'm sure. How many days was this going to take? 21 days? Volgda. Volgda is here. I think, yeah, we'll go after them first. Because we're going to tell them to surrender. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we could finish this Onega thing in 21 days, and then we can pivot quickly over here. The good news is that our capital is quite far away from the front, you know? Uh-huh. Alright, we got some new recruits here. Sat in a circle in the barracks. Modest pile of cigarettes. Uh, okay, so they're bedding cigarettes. Why else would you join the army? I'm here to win cigarettes. <laughs> Get the cigarette. Oh, hey there, Ian. Yeah, YouTube's notifications is just... What can you do? We will not bake Dune so easily. Ah! Hang in there. All right, come on. Okay, Clara, Clara. Now that there's more than six of you, let's get you over here and on this front line. Let's see. It's still the same mod. The splash art makes it impossible to play for Coomers. What? Uh, Vo Vologda surrenders. Vologda has accepted our demand of surrender, turning over their arms, standing their military down, and transferring the administration of their territory to the front. Already, inspection of their armed forces has begun, as well as retraining and re-education where necessary in order to ensure a reliable auxiliary corps. With this fortunate turn of events, our timetable for the unification of West Russia has been set forward greatly, and we can freely begin our comprehensive integration of the newly acquired territory into our own organs. A military government has been established over the region with officers that distinguish themselves in our past conquests becoming the provisional governors pending the recruitment of local administrators. Uh -huh. So, excellent. That's freaking great. Free territory. Like to have it. Give me more of it whenever possible. Um, yeah, so we're going to do the research facilities over here. And uh, we can start integrating. Yeah, let's start it. Okay. How about purchasing the equipment down here? Nope. They don't really have much available. Uh-huh. 
Oh, I just looked over the chat and I just saw in all caps. Stop talking about politics. We must reunite Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's late night. I was being a little chiller. But you're right. We must concentrate on the greater goal. What the heck? What's going on here? Oh, it's because they don't have any orders, really. Uh, let's just do this. Bring you over here. And... Go Clara. Uh, canceled Operation White Flag. Cool. So, do we have to be at peace for this stuff? No, not necessarily. So, do we want to go for Comey now? I think we do. Let's just do it. No sense in waiting. They're only going to get stronger. We just need to win this fight. Oh, what's going on here? Ah! It's official Richard Nixon has resigned, and so now we get to see what Moe Kennedy looks like. We've got... Oh, well, hello there. Wearing a turtleneck sweater. Okay. I guess that was style in those days, like tying an onion to your belt. Is Comey going crazy, or are you going to have to d strangle its burgeoning democratic capitalist system in its crib? Uh, they're going to space, is what they are. They're, they're, they're space race with, um, with communist characteristics. <laughs> All right, dang, I don't like how this is actually turning into a fight. Why is that happening? We've easily beaten them before. Comey has refused our warnings. They've refused to respond positively to our generous offer of surrender and amnesty. Troop movements from within their borders have been reported by our spotters. It seems that they are preparing to repel an armed incursion by our forces. This, they, are, of course, are unaware that doing so will merely delay their bitter end on their border. We shall raise the red flags and deliver their final warning. They refused our most generous first offer. We must penalize them. Blah, 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 blah. Surrender or we're going to kill you. Oh, why did I do that? I should have waited. It's going to probably actually start the war early by accident. Uh, they've got six divisions. We've got eight. You know what? If they try to push into our arterial, there's going to be gaps in the line and we'll just run through them. But, uh, you know, we also need to do this. Is this in our three days? Estimated. How are they moving where they're attacking or whatever? We're currently winning two days. Comey refuses the final warning. The time for a final warning to be accepted has come and gone, and the only solution left is war. Uh, declaration of formal hostilities shall coincide with the landing of the first shell in their territory. There will be no mercy. Well, that's how it goes, I guess. Uh, but we can have this open for, dang it, only, or no, 13 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's try to drag this out so that this border war over here can end. Damn it, how do they keep having so many fresh troops? Only one division of theirs is attacking right now. Okay, so the others have get, done their trance. We have two divisions of our own defending. I think we're going to win. Hmm. Reginald Malding has been elected English Prime Minister. Is this some sort of variant on Sabre there? Or no, it's, it's Violet! It's Violet Evergarden! Oh, wow. Oh, I need to see those movies. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, this is this was an amazing, amazing anime. Violet Evergarden. It's so emotional in a lot of different ways. Everybody talks about episode ten, and episode ten was great, and it did make me cry. I'm not gonna deny that. Um, and it made me cry even though in like the first five minutes I realized what was gonna happen. That's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, knowing something's going to happen. It often makes sense, like, in any story, in any genre, you know, whatever. Nice, we won. Okay. Let's get everybody, get everybody, get your asses back here right now. But, uh, Violet Evergarden was just so much more than just that episode 10. I think people just tend to remember episode 10. I'm not going to talk spoilers, but... Because episode 10 is almost a standalone episode. Like, you can kind of... You, you can almost watch episode 10 without watching the rest of the series. And I bet you there's people who have done that. Uh, like, you just need the bare bones uh, context. Uh, but it's so much more. I haven't seen the movies yet, though. Uh, but also here... So, fun fact about Violet Evergarden when I watched it. When I watched it, I watched the entire series in a day. So, what's that? 13 episodes? I watched all 13 episodes in one day. I got up early, got started. I was done by noon. And uh, that, let me tell you something. If you ever you ever think that you should do that, don't. It is going to destroy you. <laughs> uh, okay, we can see some wealth here. Industrial equipment output. Equipment societal output will improve. Okay, let's do that. 
Did Moscow just collapse? Oh yeah, Moscow went to shit. It's kind of reuniting a little bit now. Like the Antichrist and stuff showed up. It, it was bad. Real bad time. Uh, out here. Super Gamer Grill says, I never cry. I go through it without crying. Well, you know, different things impact different people differently. Nothing wrong with if you do or don't. The Violet Evergarden, there was a couple of episodes that hit me. And it's just so well written, and it's gorgeous. The animation is absolutely beautiful. Um, and it was after I watched Violet Evergarden that I found out that uh, that was that the, that the studio that made um, that made Violet Evergarden was the one that got attacked by that arson arsonist whose trial I think is still going on. And so like they had like the people in the company died uh, from that from that attack. Let's see here. Um, but what else? Yeah, that 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 company. What else did they do? I think it was called Anaconi or Konami. I don't know. It's something. It's something like the name of the city they're from or whatever. Am I excited for the new economics tab coming soon? Well, I don't know much about it, and I don't know how soon soon means. Uh, but I'm sure it'll be cool. You know. Uh, you know, getting getting the econ economic aspect of the game some improvement will give people things to do during peacetime, which, let's face it, a lot of TNO is, because it's a Cold War setting game, so uh, there's not as much um, warfare. They defeated the Siberian Anarchy and onward ran the River of Anarchy. Wow, I think they're going to actually do it. I think the only ones that are left is the People's Revolutionary Council, but, as I've said before, I have seen the anarchists unite... Wow, Cheetah's looking strong. But, uh... Yeah, this is happening as well. The Divine Mandate. Um, but yeah, I, I got... I watched all of Violet Evergarden in a day. Wow, check out this president of Mexico. Luis Echevarra. Um, dead will become an actual threat in the game, yep. Poor, poor Glenn players, right? They're about to have a bad time. Uh, but yeah, so I was done by like noon, and I had work later that day, and I was drinking. <laughs> I was, I sobered up by then, you know, I took a, I went to sleep and stuff, I think I was working graveyard that particular day. Um, uh, that, but that was, uh, yeah, Vi Violet Evergarden. I know, and I can't talk about it too much without spoilers, but just... So much of her story, the 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 aspects of her her being a veteran and, and trying to reintegrate into society, and you know, it, you know her learning emotions. So obviously, a lot of it was emotional, and like not every episode, like it's a very emotional show, and it's not always crying either. Like episode six, where they're in the observatory, which I can't to get I can't get too into it without spoilers, but like. That, I don't think there's anything sad in that particular episode, but it, it you know it tugs at certain feelings and emotions. You know, let's just put it this way: the androids from Near Automata would never be allowed to watch that show. You know, it's gonna but, uh, make Outer Heaven again once the economy thing is there. The studio is called Kyoto Animation Kyoani. Yeah, that's it. So they've got like a weird set of. Um, there goes Kennedy. It just takes a second to die. Well, John McCormick, how you feeling? Put a sunflower in your head and some pep in your heart. We're in full-blown American despair out there. May God help us all. Well, that sounds like an American problem. I'm over here dealing with Russian ones. Um, uh, but what was it? Yeah, Kion Anime, I think they're also the ones who did K-On! And, uh... They've done a couple of different shows. They did that. They did the Dragon Maid one. It's my understanding. I've heard some people refer to them as, like... A lesbian bait company because <laughs> uh, I guess their shows tend to be centered on women and women interactions um, I don't know how true that is uh, Violet Evergarden was centered about a woman's uh, you know dealing with the death of a man who loved her so I don't know Hey, you finally got to catch a CHD live stream. Well, that's why I'm doing this late night stream, so people in other time zones could do it. TNO Russia wishes it was dealing with TNO America's problems. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. 
Oh, wow, you have a little bit of a civil rights issue? You're trying to figure out if people of different skin color can, uh, can sit at the diner with you or not? I'm not saying those are trivial problems, but, um... We've got the Aryan Brotherhood purging all non-so-called Aryans right now, west of the, the Urals. So we have a different set of problems. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we've got, um, well, I guess Novo Siberia. I don't really know much about these. It's my understanding that they don't get too extreme. Uh, but like, let's see, what, what else is curious? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've, got the, we've got the exiled Presidium out here about to put everybody, and I mean everybody, into the, uh, into the gulags. <laughs> Although judging by reactions in the live chat when I did the premiere of the revolutionary things, uh, because now Yagoda, instead of being an ugly old man, is a, you know, boba girl, or booba, however it's pronounced, with the, you know, with the little bit of red bra showing, I guess, I guess we're gonna see that spiking, uh, usage of, uh, Yagoda, thanks to the Moe order. <laughs> Is it late night here? Yeah, a bit. It's not super duper duper late. Um, but uh, it's it's a bit later in Texas. Especially because I'm in West Texas. No, no, East Texas is later than it is here but right now. But Okay, so we've got their tank division surrounded. Uh, let's go ahead and close the channels here. So we're just destroying all the rest of their forces. I'm kind of hoping... Oh, are they going to do something stupid? I think they're about to abandon their capital. I think they are. Do it. Do it. Move out of the way. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. It's going to be a few more hours. One more hour. Yep. And that's how you win the game. Oh, the Aryan Brotherhood just conquered the Islamic Republic. Yeah, they're about to have a bad time there. Yeah, I think I think the uh, the members of the Islamic Brotherhood, uh, the Islamic Republic that is now underneath the Aryan Brotherhood, they wish that their biggest problem going on was uh, a little bit of domestic discontent and a couple of assassinated leaders. <laughs> All right, it's official. We have beaten. We have beaten. We have beaten Comey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. It's like, e even in TNO, well, I guess it depends on what American paths you are, but yeah, can you imagine some Russian somehow getting a Amer uh, newspaper of American news? Wow, the Stonewall riots happened and it looks like eight whole people died. Um, uh, you know, some family in Arkansas uh, or Menzin or something is reading that and like, imagine it's a world where I didn't fix the agricultural problem up here. It's like, wow, that sounds really rough. Uh, my family died because it turns out, or yeah, yeah, half of my family has starved to death because it turns out it's really hard to do agriculture in the Arctic Circle. <laughs> Are things all right in the southern U.S.? I heard the power infrastructure there has problems. Um, I haven't heard anything today, but I haven't really looked at the news today. I've been doing one thing or another. I don't know. Let's see what's what's going on in the world today. United States news. Uh, let's see whatever search comes up. Uh, okay, so I put, you know, I guess because I put United States, it looks like there's a show called United States of Al that just came out. So it's just a bunch of reviews for that show that are popping up. I've never heard of what this show is. Oh, well. So, so a TV show is happening in the United States. That's, I guess, the biggest news story because that's what popped up when I typed in United States news. Let's integrate Comey. And then we're going to go after the Order of St. George as soon as we're done closing the channels here. Uh... <laughs> hmm. Let's see here. Oh, you're talking about the, the Texas power thing? Uh, yeah, the, the power grid when that... You know, that cold front came through. But that was last month, or month before last month now. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a bad time for Texas. Now, that didn't affect El Paso, actually, because, um, as many of you have been hearing, and it's my understanding it's starting to become international news, Texas has its own power grid, but El Paso wasn't really a part of all that, so I can't speak as much to it. Oh, God's the North. It's official. Divine Mandate has been formed.
Yeah, August of 1964. That's what's real. It's my understanding that's what really makes this so hard. Is it's just you start so late compared to everybody else. Um, but yeah, the uh, the power grid thing. Uh, so I I am not as knowledgeable about that, even though I'm living here in Texas. I don't I don't know the details of that because it didn't affect El Pasoans because El Pasoans uh, we are not part of the Texas grid actually. Uh, because I think Texas forgets that we exist out here, so maybe they just forgot to put us in it. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? Let's do a real quick raid. Okay. Let's set up for this raid. Did I misclick something? Okay, no, 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 yeah, we're preparing. The Thief Territory of Yugra. What a name. What a name. And then we're going to scavenge for loot, so once we beat them, we'll have two loot again, and I guess we're going to do uh, maybe industry equipment again. Oh, yeah, what is the what is army professionalism at now? Yeah, we're doing it nine a month. We're now officially halfway there to improving our army professionalism, just sprinting through this. Olms Kizbukun, it's expansion. Uh, so Operation Burning Cross. Let's get to it. Before Vyatka eats them, which it looks like they're going to. Am I near Oklahoma or Mexico? Oh no, Oklahoma's a long way from where I live. Uh, I live in El Paso. I've lived in Oklahoma in the past. It's been many years. I haven't lived there in like 10 years now, actually, I think. Alright. Come on, let's beat him up, 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 beat him up. Do we got him? Do we got him? It's gonna last another 1985 days. No, no, we, we can't. That was good. Yeah, they refused our terms. Whatever, that's y'all's funeral, St. George. Come on, we gotta take them before Vyatka does. Hmm, shouldn't I have two loot? Oh no, the scavenge for loot thing's not done yet. That's it. There's your problem. Uh, let's also go ahead and keep integrating. Or, no, we're already integrating Comey. Uh, so what's this then? Oh, this is preparing for raids. Okay, how many hearts of iron four hours do you have? I don't know because I used to have a really bad habit, and actually I did it today also, where I would, um, like, be playing hearts of iron four or something, and then when I'm done, I wouldn't close it. I would just walk away, so it would be tallying the hours, like, when I slept or when I was at work, because I just didn't close it. So I have no clue, but it's definitely in the hundreds. It's probably, yeah, actually, I would say it's very safely, it's very safe to say I'm in the thousand mark. They refuse the morning. Couldn't I just rush Vyatka? Um, well, I have to. I can't go to war with them yet. Uh, we don't do that until here, Operation Second Sun, which we can't do until we've done all the other areas. Come on, come on. I just want to... Oh, Vyatka's going to take it. There we go. Go, 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 go. Take the capital. Taking the capital means we get it all. All right. Uh, decrease scoring time. Ten-minute trials. Uh, crying to the front. Power play by one of the traders. Seuss off towards the front apart, leaving it without a seat of government. It's in shambles. Tukachevsky, it's time for consensus. It's time for conspirators to pray the price of justice. We're not gonna, we're gonna round them up and not kill them. At least not without due trial. This ain't some kind of purge. Uh, Vityuka wins in Osland. This is over here. Yeah. Hmm. No, we have to be the ones to take the capital. It's the race to gain in. Nope, they took it. Shit. We weren't even involved, pretty much. Fine. Then you get to die next, Vyatka. Just as soon as we're done with all the rest of this. But I don't think we're going to get into that war today. Probably going to, uh... 
Oh wow, yep, yep, we just bypassed all this because we didn't actually take any of it. That sucks. Um, hmm. Six more days there. Well, we're, we're definitely in position to win here. Um, I don't think there's much they can do to stop us. All right, and our tank starters are pretty much ready to go, so that's fun. Let's see here, okay. Hmm. Biatka has declared war on the Aryan Brotherhood. So now we'll get to take them from behind, maybe. No, I don't think we're going to get it. In fact, I'm probably going to call it pretty soon here. It is late, but it was nice to, uh, you know, get some people from different time zones in here. How do I remove the neon thing Tino has? I have a sub mod on that, like, kind of, sort of brings back the vanilla UI. Oh boy, Aryan Brotherhood just cut them off. Oh yeah, let's get that academic base improving and industry stuff. That's why I decided. Yeah, right. Quick justice. Ah, uh, so now we're going to start punishing all the fascists and stuff. Uh, the first to go had been the rightists. He said nothing, even as Gumilyov, uh, Gumi, Gumilyov bid an affable goodbye to everyone. Nor did he flinch as the crowds drowned out Shafa, uh, Shafarovic's attempt at a defense. And he didn't let loose a chuckle as Taboritsky was dragged out in record time. His defense, beginning and ending in a single phrase, had the Germans killed every last one of you. Um, let's see here. Uh, several would swear that as Ivrin Serov was dragged out with eyes full... Hold on a sec, what is that? Hmm. Uh, sorry. Um. Hold on, what is this? I've spent the last several hours editing Stellaris alien portraits onto the characters from Interspecies Reviews just to make a Xeno compatibility joke worth it. I'm sure it is! I've been enjoying your funny content, Ben Kitten. It's especially that, uh, the Victoria 3 thing, which ends with the guy shooting himself in the head. I've watched that one way too much. Uh, just looping it. Um, hold on, let me drink some water here. Several would swear that as Ivan Serov was dragged out with eyes full of fear, a single small smirk appeared on Suslov's face. The truth was, he was largely preoccupied with his own mortality. An attempt to run would lead to you being shot. An attempt to plead your case would end with you being shot. Tukhachevsky had already decided who was innocent. Bukharina and Andropov were not pressed into the crowd of leftist paramilitary members and others who had been sorted. A single small pang of fear hit him even as his stoic mass belied nothing. He was going to die here, no matter what was said or done. Begging, like Voznesensky, being defiant, like Stalina and Kosygin. Not a single way past the great... Uh, uh, past the Grand Marshal's verdict. As the center was swept aside and the left trials began, the pangs grew. The next hour dragged on as the show continued. The jurors stated a single word. The impassioned prosecutors read their scripts with a driven zeal and the crowd roared. Then came his turn and the pangs subsided. If he was going to die, why give the Grand Marshal an inkling of satisfaction? Mikhail Suslov raised his head high and spoke one sentence clearly. I have nothing to say. So we lost five stability. So basically we executed, it sounded like everybody except for Andropov and Bukharina, um, who was a potential leader from uh, Komi, have now been executed in these essentially show trials. When Tukhachevsky, you might say he was purging the opposition. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, okay, now what? I think we want to... Oh, do we have? Oh, look at us. We've got agency stuff now. Look at us go. I really don't like the agency stuff, though, here, because, like, you kind of got to go left to right, and it's just this whole thing. I don't like it. 
Uh, yeah, who actually cares? Huh. Oh, boy. The Aryans are tearing Vyatka apart. Cut through in there and there. Oh, well, I thought Ehrenberg was part of him, but no, it's still, it's still not good for Vyatka. Rommel's running wild. How's Omsk doing? They're slowly pushing back to Yumin. And uh, Novosibirsk is about to uh, secure their region. They'll be the first ones done. Hmm. Still. Oh, no! Finally found somebody I can trade rubber with. Nice. Fantastic. Huh. Local Russian warlord governments commit war crimes. Crickets. No one's batting an eye. <laughs> yep, that's how it is. It's hard to keep track. Hey, what's that, that joke? I don't know what cartoon it was from, but yeah, I could just imagine the thing where it's just... Uh, hey, uh, have you been hearing about that? It's like, you hear about the war crimes? Well, who's committing them? One of the Russian warlords. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? End the Republic. It'll give me some stability back. Sure, let's do that. Oh. You know what, though? I am starting to get a little bit tired. Oh, Samara's attacking Gorky. So, uh... I think we're going to... Maybe call it a day here. Yeah, I think, I think we are. We're going to go ahead and call it a night. Wow, look at me with my 433 political power. All the integrations are going to be happening. <laughs> uh, at least very soon. Uh, but thanks very much for joining me for today's stream. I hope those of you who were able to catch it, who, uh, you know, because like, I usually don't stream this late, uh, enjoyed it. I'm going to be calling it a night. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day. I'm going to try to stream. No promises, though. I've definitely got some things I need to work on, uh, personally. Um, but, uh, yeah. Thanks. Oh, thanks for, thanks for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games, and I'll see y'all next time. Good night. Hmm.